Assalamu alaikum. My name is uh, Osama Rida. I'm a degree student, business. Uh, just my question is about salah. You've mentioned and give us uh, knowledge about zakah and how it benefit our society. So what about salah? Why we should gather in the mosque? What is the benefit of it for the community and the society? Thank you. Brother, that's the question that in my lecture I gave the example of zakat. What about salah? What is the benefit of salah? Why should you go to the mosque and have a congregation and gathering? Brother, I've given a full lecture on salah, the programming towards righteousness. It's for about one and a half. I don't intend doing that. You cannot cover all the points in one lecture. Salah is the second important, the second pillar of Islam. After Tawheed, believing in Allah, that there's no one except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala worthy of worship, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger, the second is Salah. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the first deed that will be asked you on the day of judgment is about your Salah. And according to Imam al-Bahabi, not praying falls as the fourth major sin in Islam. Number one is shirk, second is murder, third is black magic, fourth is foregoing Salah. It is the fourth major sin in Islam. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume one in the book of Salah, that if you pray in Jama, you get 25 times, 27 times more sawab. So praying in Jama is 25 to 27 times better congregation. And there are several hadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad but the hadith of Prophet Muhammad it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume 1 in the book of Salah, that the Prophet said that people do not come to the mosque for the Jummah Salah. He felt like telling one of the Sahaba to lead the Salah so that he would go and burn the houses of those people who did not come for the Jummah Salah. There's another hadith in which the Prophet Muhammad said. So based on the scholars, praying Juma Salah is fard. And if you do it for three times without reason, Allah blocks your heart. And according to Imam al-Dhabi, it is the 66th major sin in Islam. Not paying, praying persistently Juma Salah in congregation is the 66th major sin. Imam al-Dhabi also says sin number 65. One sin before that that persistently not praying in the mosque, in the congregation, salah with jamaah, without a valid reason. There's another hadith of Sahih Bukhari, volume 1, book of salah. The prophet said, the hypocrites did not come for the fajr salah or the isha salah. And if they knew the reward, they would come crawling. I felt like telling one of the sahabas to lead the salah so that I can go out and burn the homes of the men with them in it who did not come for the congregation salah. So praying in jama, the five times salah, according to very few scholars it is mustahab sunnah. Majority scholars say it is fard. Imam al-Dhabi says in his book, in Qabair, it is the 65th major sin that if you do not pray five times salah in the congregation in the mosque. So most of the scholars agree that you have to pray unless you have a valid reason that if maybe you're traveling or if you're sick. Or normally at the time of the Sahabas, if a person did not come to the mosque to pray, he was either sick or he was a munafik. That's what the Sahaba did. So praying compulsory in the Salah, in congregation is a must. What are the various benefits? I can give a talk for one hour only on scientific benefits. Time doesn't permit me, but you can see my video cassette. You come closer to the Muslim Ummah, you get guidance from the Imam, your khushu increases. The best time, the best peace of mind is the time of Salah. And the best part of Salah is the sujood. Allah mentioned sajda and sujood in the Quran 92 times. But if you know what khushu is, you will understand it. You can only enjoy the fruit if you have a taste of it. So if you know what benefit of Salah, one minor benefit, minor benefit I'll tell you. You know, people say, you know, the 10 richest men in the world, and list goes on, Mukesh Ambani, number 10, and Warren Buffett, and number one goes to Bill Gates. Now it is Jeff something. He's overtaken Bill Gates recently. Jeff someone, uh, who's the owner of Amazon. He's overtaken Bill Gates, number one. 
and there was another post that says number 10 ambani number 3 bill gates number 2 jeff number 1 is who a muslim who offers two rakat of sunnah salah before fajr because the beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that if you pray two rakat sunnah before fajr it is more valuable than the earth and the wealth in it so if you have a muslim you understand that you will know the reward of that it is a sunnah salah sunnah muqida so imagine what would be the reward for the fajr salah but how many muslims realize that many do but not all if you know that you know once a businessman approached me the billionaire you know but the zakir i i pray four times salah but i cannot get up for fajr so i told him that what if you have a meeting tomorrow early in the morning at 5:30 where if the deal clicks you'll get a billion dollar he said i will not sleep the full night so i told him you know the sunnah salah of the fajr is more valuable than the world and the wealth in it trillions and zillions of dollars so if you have that iman and if you have that faith then you will realize what important it is that's what the prophet said if the munafiq knew what was the benefit of coming for the isha salah and fajr salah to the mosque they would crawl coming to it so unfortunately most of us muslims don't know the benefit but alhamdulillah i'm happy in malaysia as compared to india the percentage of muslims praying in india is very small in the mosque i would say less than five percent but here alhamdulillah i'm happy that the percentage of muslim men muslims praying in the mosque is multiple times more than india and pakistan but as a Muslim, the benefit you get, the sukoon, the serenity, the peace, it is much more than the wealth. So if you know what peace is, you will value it. If you don't know, you won't value it. So if a Muslim reads the Quran and the Hadith and understands what benefit it is, then you will care less for the material things. And you will come closer to the deen and you'll find the benefit. For more details, refer to my talk, Salah, the programming to the righteousness. Hope that answers the question.